I'm David Wasserman. I am the U.S. House Editor and Political Analyst for the Cook Political Report in Washington, D.C. It turned out to be an effective issue for the Republicans. Uh, had uh, there not been a migrant caravan approaching the border that uh, President Trump uh, exploited in conservative news media, then Republicans might not have gained seats in the Senate. They might have had worse losses in the U.S. House. And so uh, there was universally high turnout in this year's midterm election, in part because the Republican base was just as motivated to vote as the Democratic base. Uh, independent voters, however, those without a party affiliation, did vote a little bit more heavily for the Democrats, which explains why they were able to retake control of the U.S. House. 2018 was the year of the woman in congressional elections, in part because it was a reaction to the election of Donald Trump and what transpired in the 2016 campaign. There were so many Democratic women, professional women, who were uh, outraged by Donald Trump's behavior in the campaign, his behavior not only uh, as recorded in the Access Hollywood tapes, but also his name calling of Hillary Clinton, that they decided to run for office. They were in the Women's March uh, in January of 2017 after he took office, uh, and many of them became first-time candidates. Uh, they ended up winning their races uh, in Democratic primaries and winning seats in Congress. And this is the first year in American history when voters elected more than 100 women to the House of Representatives. There are 36 new women in the House, uh, and uh, the Democrats are 35 of those 36. Uh, in fact, 35 of the 62 new Democrats in the House are women. And so this was truly the year of, of the fired up female college graduate. And the irony is that this historic milestone in Congress wouldn't have taken place without Donald Trump's election. So uh, American voter turnout in 2018 was, was pretty strong. 50.1% uh, of Americans who are eligible cast ballots. And that uh, doesn't sound impressive by European standards, but it's actually far higher than the number of voters who typically cast ballots in non-presidential elections. Youth voter turnout was way up from 2014 and 2010, the last two times we had a midterm election. It was still well behind that of senior citizens turnout. But there's no question that uh, the youngest demographic of voters uh, favors Democrats and holds a very low opinion of Donald Trump. And that did help Democrats win a lot of seats this year. The question is whether they show up in large numbers in 2020, uh, because Barack Obama had a unique ability to motivate young voters. Hillary Clinton clearly did not. Uh, and in order for Democrats to win uh, in 2020, they probably need to, uh, to nominate a, uh, a charismatic candidate who can appeal to younger and particularly non-white voters. The fact that Democrats retook control of the House probably benefits Donald Trump's chances of re-election, and that might seem uh, unusual, but the reason is that Democrats now have the power to launch a lot of investigations into the White House, and it's possible that they may overplay their hand by trying to attack so many different elements of Trump's campaign, his businesses, cabinet officials, that, uh, that Trump's base uh, perceives it as, uh, as a, a partisan attack, that they will rally to his defense, that, Ameri that uh, Americans in the middle believe that Democrats are more concerned with, uh, with opposing Trump than they are uh, when it comes to, uh, to addressing rising health care costs, jobs, uh, and, and even on immigration, and that they will stick with Trump for another four years. So Democrats have to be careful to understand the reasons why they did so well in 2018. They chiefly won the House back because voters were frustrated with the Republican bill to repeal uh, Obamacare, the health care law. Uh, they were also upset with Republicans' tax reform in certain parts of the country where uh, it, it, uh, it adversely affected voters. Uh, so uh, Democrats, if they lose focus on those issues and their focus shifts towards investigating the president, could uh, relinquish some of the gains that they made with the voters this year. 
there was a, a sense after this year's midterm elections that Obamacare was safe, that Republicans no longer had a congressional majority so they couldn't repeal it. Well, uh, a judge in Texas uh, uh, made a, a ruling that uh, a lot of legal scholars believe to be uh, uh, an outlier, uh, a, a crackpot decision, if you will, uh, something outside the judicial mainstream. It will go to a federal court of appeals. Uh, it's, it's possible that the Supreme Court will take it up, but it's also possible the Supreme Court won't take it up if the federal uh, court of appeals uh, decides to, to leave the status quo in place. So uh, yes, major health care organizations, including the American Medical Association, are, are watching this development very carefully. And they're hopeful that, uh, that uh, the uh, judicial branch will uphold most current provisions of the law rather than roll back the health care law to 2009. But uh, there, there is some, some jeopardy. Uh, 